One of the biggest surprises of the entire season so far has been the play of the Atlanta Falcons. Michael Turner, their stellar running back, tied for the lead in rushing this year with 13 rushing touchdowns. He's been a force to be reckoned with. Their coach, Mike Smith, Jeff, being rumored uh, as being a very strong contender or maybe even the winner for the coach of the year. They've got a big game this weekend against the Saints, who basically need to win out to make the playoffs. Atlanta at New Orleans. What do you think is going to go down in this game? I never thought that New Orleans would be the cellar dweller in their team. They're like the hottest uh, offense in the whole NFL, number one in total offense. So this is a totally topsy-turvy division. Atlanta, they got totally screwed by Michael Vick uh, a couple years ago. And so now, now, then we thought, you know, rebuilding. Right. They're bringing Michael Turner, so we think, okay, they're going to run the ball a lot, but it's not going to be very good because they got a rookie quarterback under their right. own. This Matt Ryan's amazing. Absolutely, Love this man. kid. He's got a Absolutely. great connection with Roddy White. He's got a nice connection with uh, Michael Jenkins on the other side. And Michael Turner has shown that he's really, really a great running back. So I think that we're going to see more of that here. New Orleans doesn't play that good at defense. If Atlanta wins this game, they got a chance at this division. So I think that, that Atlanta is going to win big here on the road, and I love Michael Turner's matchup. Now one note here is that Reggie Bush, who came back last week but was very, very limited mm -hmm. in action, uh, is now saying that he is going to be full bore in this contest. The Saints really, when they were hot earlier in the season, winning some games, we, we tend to forget what happens, you know, seven, eight weeks ago. Bush was one of the hottest players mm -hmm. out of the gate that first month of the season before the injury and whatnot. So, Jeff, do you like Reggie Bush in this matchup? Do you think at home here yep. he could potentially make a couple plays to help his team try to win? I, I do. I, th I think that the way that Sean Payton uses him in the return game and in the passing game really gives Reggie Bush the ability to showcase all of his skills. I think that'll happen here in a must-win game for them. And, and I, I like Bush's ability uh, out of the backfield. Uh, and, and they do run the ball well enough with Pierre Thomas uh, and, and the like, you know, just kind of moving the chains. Nothing flashy because they have Bush around the outside. So last week, I kind of like what we expect, a little bit of rust. Got that going a little bit more into the game speed and into some rhythm. I think this is the game he starts to shine again. From one surprising rookie to another, we talk now about Houston and Steve Slayton really popping off last week on Monday night. Now Houston travels to Green Bay. They get their starting quarterback, Matt Schaub, back in, ap in action for this showdown. And Green Bay coming off a tough home mm -hmm. loss last week to the Panthers. Break it down. Yeah, tough Break home it down. loss. So that, that dropped the Packers out of contention currently in, in, in the NFC North, which I definitely want to say again, the Packers are not in contention currently in the NFC North. They could still win out and make the, but make the, they, make the and division. They're in a must-win situation if they want to make it a tight race. So I think they win in this game for sure. So as far as Houston's concerned, uh, Green Bay is somewhat susceptible against the rush, so I do like Steve Slayton a lot. They're great against the pass. Uh, Matt Schaub's going to be a little bit rusty, so to me, it's going to be a lower scoring game. I do think they'll funnel their offense through Steve Slayton, uh, but I don't expect much from the passing game. On the flip side, as far as Green Bay is mm -hmm. concerned, Greg Jennings is a guy you absolutely have to start every single week. Aaron Rodgers loves to get him the ball, but we are seeing a, a little bit of uh, changing, potentially changing of the guard, uh, as it were, at the running back position. Brandon Jackson playing at a higher level so far this season, really starting to earn some more carries. So for, from a fantasy perspective, although the matchup is juicy, it is tough to start Ryan Grant here because Jeff Brandon Jackson's just outplaying Ryan Grant, and the coaches are even saying so. Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting, a uh, little battle to watch here because they have to run the ball, you know, if they want to win and make the playoffs. So it depends on who they want to use here. I wouldn't be surprised if they went committee approach. But to me, a little bit bigger factor is when you beat the Packers is when you get pressure on Aaron Rodgers, force him into some early throws, get that experience to come out. And Mark Tauscher is their right tackle. He's been injured, had a, a heck of a time trying to contain Julius Peppers, and now he's got Julius Peppers Jr. coming in. Right. Mario Williams on the left side end. He's going to give whoever's running that right tackle fits all day long, and that could be a tell in, into what the passing game does for Green Bay if, if Williams can get in the grill of, of Aaron Rodgers much at all. Now the Jets traveled to San Francisco. Uh, last week was a very, very bad loss for the Jets at home. Uh, yeah. co coming into the game as one of the hottest teams in the league, playing against a Denver squad who just a week before had gotten housed, I believe in their own house by the lowly Raiders. We looked at that game last week. I mean, we had no way of knowing that the Jets were just going to give it up like a hoe from high school. Uh, as far as at home, they just they, they really flopped against the Broncos. That game was over at halftime. So, Jeff, 
Do the Jets get it going again here against San Francisco on the road? I, I sure think they should. Well, they're, they're they're too darn good to not. You know, I to me that last week that last week's game against Mike Shanahan, I think Shanahan had the the right mentality going in, and then also the Jets they overlooked uh, the white hype Peyton Hillis. Uh, and they just didn't worry about him. Well, they kept running. The Broncos kept running the ball if, yep. in passing type situations and picking up 12, 13, 8 yards here and there. And, and they, they kept the Jets' offense off the field. So it's going to be a different story. Usually when a team that's contending for the playoffs and or the Super Bowl, when they lose a game, they usually come back with a vengeance. That's going to happen here. Jets blow out. Yeah, I think so too. I really like Thomas Jones here. If you're in a larger uh, a larger league, you can start playing Leon Washington. When, when the chips are down and, and uh, the team needs a big conversion, they give the ball to Leon uh -huh. Washington. Favre really likes the connection there. And all just as all season long, we've seen Lavernius Coles with the inconsistent play, uh, bad attitude. We saw it last week. He was totally unengaged in that game. Only had one catch, I believe, for two yards. You don't want to start him. And Jericho Cotri hasn't really emerged like we thought bad he might. Bad shoulder. He's had, he's had some plays, but really the playmaker here for this offense, in my opinion, is Thomas Jones, their running back. Tied for the league lead, 13 rushing touchdowns on the season. He's a fantastic play here against Frisco. And on San Fran's side, I mean, the only guy you can really roll with is Frank Gore. I disagree. I think that Frank Gore's lost all heart. Now, I'm not saying you want to bench him, right? Because you put, spent your first round pick on him. Just don't expect much. The Jets are a good team. They're good at stopping the run. And Frank Gore has no heart. I'd love to see, because he's awesome when they have a chance to win. Early in the season, he's the quintessential big-time starter, fizzle off at the end. He's like a Randy Moss type player. Yeah, he's I mean, he's, he's the quintessential guy who can't last in bed. You know what I'm saying? Like, he doesn't leave anybody uh, satisfied at all. You know all about I that. Would, I would love to see <laughs> what Frank Gore can do. Uh, with the with the Niners uh, having a chance to make the playoffs, you know, have him motivated for the full season. I swear he could rush for 2,000 yards and like 35 touchdowns. It's just never going to happen. Now the Chiefs may have settled on a quarterback. It's a guy we know a little bit about being Vikings fans here. It is Tyler Thigpen starting to play well for Kansas City. And this week, Coach Herman Edwards even coming out and saying that the team has taken a long look at him because he could potentially be their quarterback of the future. Now, Jeff, he travels to Denver to face off with the Broncos, who, as we mentioned, had a huge win last week. But fantasy owners are playing Tyler Thigpen. I know in one of my games uh, in Hollywood's league, the guy I'm going against is starting Tyler Thigpen in this matchup. Thigpen is a little bit of a risky play here for a playoff game but definitely startable KC at Denver. Well, you know, Denver made a big statement last week when they won on the road against the Jets. That was a playoff matchup, and they came ready to play. And I think that they're going to definitely want to keep the momentum going here. Uh, it's a divisional game. They face Kansas City with a horribly diseased defense. Start all of your Broncos. Peyton Hillis makes a good play here. Uh, both Eddie Royal yep. and, and Brandon Marshall are good plays here, as well as Tony Scheffler. Cutler likes to check off to him a lot. And I think that that's going to be a definite uh, uh, theme here in this game. Um, and then LJ makes a pretty good play as well. He's going to do his thing, which right. is get his talent out there on the field and, and run hard, try to make everybody forget how much he despises women. Yeah, exactly. And, and Larry Johnson last week was a good omen for him. He got the lion's share of the carries in that game, pl playing at a, at, at a pretty solid level. Remember, he had a big game earlier in the season where he went for over 200 yards, so he still has that high upside. You can play him here against a beatable Denver run D. Uh, the final matchup of the show, Jeff, the New England Patriots travel to Seattle to face the Seahawks. Now, a couple weeks back, Matt Castle was widely regarded as one of the hottest quarterbacks in the league. He really came crashing back to earth uh, last week, albeit against a very tough mm -hmm. D. Do you see, as I do, this game being a game where Matt, Matt Castle comes back and has another yeah. really strong statistical outing against a pretty putrid Seattle yep. team? I totally agree with you. It seems like Seattle is completely mailing it in right now. It's a, a talented defense. Uh, they're pretty talent deficient offensively, in my opinion. So I just I think that, that Seattle, it's going to be the first time they miss a playoffs in like five seasons. Yep. And, and uh, they, they play in one of the worst divisions in the NFL. Yep. They've got like two victories on the year. Bad. It's really, really ugly there. Holmgren likely to retire at the end of the season. So at New England, here's the big thing for me. Bill Belichick's always been looked at as this genius offensively, but he's totally one-dimensional. They can't run the ball. Right. They ain't going to run the ball this week. They're going to throw it like crazy. He doesn't care. He's going to throw Matt Castle out there. 
300 yards, three touchdowns for Matt Castle is my prediction. I like Matt Castle, I like Randy Moss, and I really like Wes Welker in this game I wouldn't game play too. him against a guy like me in a fantasy matchup, though, if I were you, dude. <laughs> I'm throwing Wes Welker out there against Jeff. We've got to close the show uh, talking about this matchup. Zach commissions the league. It's called the Puff League, uh, and it's a league we've played in now for three seasons. You and I square off this week in, a, in, in the first round of the playoffs, man. I'm throwing Matt Castle at you. Yeah, I'm a little nervous about Matt Castle. Well, I'll be, I'll be rolling out there with uh, uh, Peyton Manning. And uh, just to clarify, this is Powers United Fantasy Football or Puff. It's the Puff League. Not uh, Fantasy Football yeah, League. Yeah, we, we don't need to go there. But it will be fun to break it down for you on next week's show, kind of kind of uh, tell you who won out of this matchup. It's not. I, I don't think we've played each other in the playoffs in several years. It's been a while. It has been a while. I mean, usually, you know, I'm there matched up against other people, and, <laughs> and you're, like, locking down the show. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> next week, I'm going to be in Mexico uh, locking down my old lady because we're going on a second honeymoon, so maybe I'll call you from the beautiful white beaches, Jeff, oh. while you uh, hold the fort down here at oh. home with Zach. Well, yeah, nice. Way to make you jealous, dude. Way to rub it in, man. <laughs> But you got to come back next week. In spite of the fact that Jesse won't be here, the show will still be on and popping every single week. We love to do this thing we do. Check out the fat chat as soon as the show wraps up. TestosteroneSports.com. Because if you want to win, you must tune in to Testosterone Fantasy Sports.